How do you sort all your scraps of fabric? There are a lot of different ways to do this. Today, I'm gonna to show you what I do. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth, and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So if you've been quilting for a while, you probably have scraps of fabric. And most quilters, they like to save them because they know they can use them someday in something. So as your scraps begin to accumulate, you have to think of how you're going to store these. And the best way to store them is in a way that you can use them in future projects. So today I'm gonna to share how I store my scraps and hopefully you can get some good ideas from this. So the first question that always comes up when you're talking about storing scraps is do you sort them by size or by color? And this takes me back to the days when my kids were really big into Lego and we have piles of Lego and we're trying to sort it. Do you sort by size or do you sort by color? And the argument that I had then that I stick to today is I say sort by size. Because if you have a bin of something and it's all the same size, you can easily see the different colors to pick out all the red. However, if you have a bin of red and they're all different sizes, it's much more difficult to pick out, say, two and a half inch wide pieces. So I stand by that, but there are other people who would disagree, and so feel free to disagree and sort your own way. With my scraps, I have two kind of sorted systems. So the first one I have is pieces that are not a certain size. These are true random scraps, and these I do sort by color, because they don't have a size. So in my fancy storage method, I have this plastic bin and in the bin, I have plastic bags and these are scraps by color. So this bag I can clearly see is all my green and this is ran green. It's anything that's not a particular size. And then I'll have this bag has yellow and then red, etc. is all in here. So if it's not a certain size, then I do sort by color. But if something is a certain size, then I will sort it by size. And these are the sizes that I like to keep. I have bins with these sizes and these are strips or squares that are this width. So I have one and a half inch, two inch, two and a half inch, three and a half, four and a half, and six and a half. And the reason why I picked those numbers is because they all work really nicely in a 12 and a half inch block. Those are all common widths. If you did a lot of half square triangles with the most popular half square triangle method, which is where you do two at a time with a diagonal line, then you might want to add four inch bin and a five inch bin because those are the sizes you need to make three and a half inch and four and a half inch half square triangles. So in my fantasy world, I would have all these scraps um, pressed and trimmed to their sizes and put into these bins. However, that doesn't work out in practical land. I don't often get to it. Um, but if I'm cutting and I have a two and a half inch strip and then I only use part of it, then the extra two and a half inch strip goes into the two and a half inch bin. Sometimes if I'm feeling really energetic, I'll take some of these scraps and I'll press them and then I'll find what's the biggest size I can get and I'll cut them and put them into these bins. But more commonly, they stay in these bags until I'm ready to do a project with them. So this year, I'm really gonna work on trying to make a dent into these scraps so that I will use some up because I love scrappy quilts and I do wanna use these. So I'm gonna be using both from these bags and from these pre-cut bands that does make it a lot more convenient. So if you follow me on social media, you can see some of the things that I'm doing. But if you have suggestions for how you like to store scraps, then put a comment below because I'd love to read it and see other ways that people sort scraps. So hopefully this has inspired you to look at your scraps in a new way and to be able to use them in projects. And if you don't like scrappy projects and you don't want to use them, then don't feel obligated to keep your scraps. You can always donate them to a guild or to a friend who does like scrappy quilts, and I'm sure that they will be happy to have them. For more quilting tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out evenastudio.com.